Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we'll look at the long super sauropod, Diplodocus. Diplodocus was first discovered in 1877 by paleontologists Benjamin Mudge and Samuel Wendell Williston. This first specimen consisted mostly of a few vertebrae bones, but was still classified and named by paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh in 1878. Diplodocus was named during the height of the Bone Wars, a fascinating time in paleontology in which Othniel Marsh was competing against another famed paleontologist, Edward Cope, to identify as many new species of dinosaur as possible. This original set of vertebrae has been identified as the type specimen for the Diplodocus genus, although there is some debate over this. The original species, Diplodocus longus, really had to rack their brain for that one, has been contested as a true species of Diplodocus, with only two fossils, one of them being extremely incomplete, ever being identified. A petition was launched to have this type specimen replaced, but it ultimately failed. Two other species of Diplodocus have been identified, with the Diplodocus halorum, previously named the Seismosaurus, first described in 1991, and Diplodocus carnegie, being identified in 1901. If the second half of that name sounds familiar, Carnegie comes from the industrialist Andrew Carnegie, who sponsored the dig that discovered this species. The name Diplodocus translates to double beam, referencing the species bone structure of having a double beamed chevron bone in the underside of the tail. While not completely unique to Diplodocus, this feature is relatively rare among its other relatives. Diplodocus belonged to a group of dinosaurs known as the sauropods, a classification of dinosaurs belonging to the Sauricia group. Sauropods are most well known for their incredible size, with many of its members being some of the largest animals to ever walk the earth. They are also recognizable for their long necks, long tails, and massive legs to support these huge bodies. Diplodocus for some time held the distinction as the longest dinosaur to ever walk the earth. Their shorter front limbs resulted in a more horizontal body. Unlike other sauropods, like Brachiosaurus, whose larger front limbs resulted in a more vertical posture. Over time, though, Diplodocus has lost this distinction. This is due to reevaluations of its size, as early estimates believed Diplodocus could reach 170 feet in length, but later estimates believed their max length could only reach about 110 feet. This is obviously still very long. But new sauropods like Supersaurus and Argentinosaurus are believed to be even longer. While it may not be the longest, Diplodocus was still massive, reaching nearly 18 feet tall and weighing almost 100 tons, the weight of an average 300 passenger Boeing jet plane. One of Diplodocus's most obvious characteristics would be its excessively long tail. This long, whip-like tail most likely served as a counterbalance to its extremely long neck, but also could have been used for protection as well. Some scientists believed its tail could be used as a whip to stave off predators, whipping quickly to generate a large intimidating sound or cause serious damage if hit. These weapons would have been used for mainly defense as Diplodocus was an herbivore, like all sauropods, and used its peg-like teeth to strip leaves and ferns from plants without chewing them. Diplodocus would have needed to eat frequently and in large quantities, as sauropods would grow extremely fast, even compared to other dinosaurs. It is estimated that Diplodocus would reach sexual maturity at the age of 10, and full size by 25 years old. With starting out at only 3 feet in length at birth, this meant that Diplodocus would need to grow an average of 8 feet in length a year. Diplodocus lived during the Jurassic period, 
about 150 million years ago, a golden age for both dinosaurs and sauropods in particular. It lived throughout North America and would have coexisted alongside herbivores like the spiky Stegosaurus and sword pod relatives like the mighty Brachiosaurus. Diplodocus would also have to fight ferocious carnivores like the Allosaurus and a dinosaur we previously discussed, the Ceratosaurus. The sheer size of Diplodocus would have been its best defense against predators, as its body could easily crush any of the previously mentioned carnivores. It is believed that at full size, a Diplodocus was nearly untouchable, similar to modern day elephants, losing many of their significant predators as they age. Due to Diplodocus's prestige as one of the longest dinosaurs and a wealth of discovered fossils over time, Diplodocus holds the honor as the most displayed sauropod across the world in museums. It has also been featured in a variety of documentaries, including 1999's Walking with Dinosaurs, being featured prominently in the episode Time of Titans. This particular episode followed a female Diplodocus as it grew from small infant to titanic adult. Diplodocus also appeared in other documentaries like 2000's Allosaurus, a Walking with Dinosaurs special, as well as children's media like the Land Before Time franchise and 2009's Dinosaur Train and even in video games like 2021's Jurassic World Evolution 2. Diplodocus's history is almost as long as the animal itself, engrossing audiences with its massive size and awe-inspiring appearance. And even for a video like this, we only just barely dipped our toes into its world. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Diplodocus, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. I've officially gone through all my pre-written scripts at this point, and we'll start taking your guys' suggestions for future dinosaurs, like next week's focus, Majungasaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.